Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm coming at you today with a 2018 favorites video. I had asked in my December favorites if y'all wanted to see this and a lot of people said they did. I felt like it might be a little repetitive, but I do know that I have some new watchers. So if you are new and maybe you haven't heard me talk about these products, it'll give you a good rundown of what I've been loving. Now, I tried to go about this a couple different ways. I thought, okay, I'm gonna go run through all my favorites videos from the year and kind of pick one or two items from each one. Um, and then I thought, no, I'm just gonna sit down and pick what I love the most which would have been a total nightmare because it would have been at least twice, if not three times as much as I've got to talk about as it is. So I figured I'd probably go a little, probably like the most boring route and go through each section of makeup, telling you what my favorite product was from within that category. So primers, foundations, blah, 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 blah. Um, I am, tr I tried to keep it to things that I discovered in 2018. But there are a couple things in here that I actually purchased in 2017, but that I rediscovered and fell in love with in 2018. So there's going to be a couple of exceptions, uh, but I think I pretty much boiled it down to 2018. So let's go ahead and get started because I got a lot of stuff on this table. Uh, let's just start with how I do my face. So primer first, and I have two primers. Again, this is one of the exceptions. I think this is the only exception to the thing that I bought in 2017 and didn't rediscover it because I've just loved it that much since. And it's the Color Science Primers. Y'all probably knew I was going to say this. I talk about these things so much. I know it's got to be so annoying to some of y'all, and I'm sorry, but my love for them is actually that strong. I have the Bronzing Perfector and the Brightening Perfector. The Bronzing Perfector, this one, I use in the summer to kind of match my face up to my body more. The Brightening Perfector I use more in the fall and winter. This is the um, primer that I have on today, and I'm telling you there is no better pore-filling, smoothing primer that I have ever used for me and my skin. Hands down, never better. It does have an SPF 20. Um, it's not enough in my personal opinion. So I do wear a separate SPF under it, but oh, it's so good. They have a calming one, I think. They have an even evening one, like not like a nighttime one, but you know, an even up your skin tone one. Um, honestly, you just, you can't, you cannot go wrong. Another one that I did purchase in 2018 is the Jane Iredell Smooth Affair Facial Primer and Brightening. This is more of an all over smoothing primer. It's going to be a little bit more moisturizing than the Color Science ones, but it may not fill in your pores as well, but it does just lay down a really nice smooth base for your foundation to go on top of. Um, I'm probably halfway done and those are the two primers that I hands down reach for the most this past year. Oh y'all go get a snack. It's gonna be a long one. All right let's go to foundations. Now y'all know my love for foundations. It's foundation and bronzer are my favorite makeup products ever and it was not exactly easy for me to pick my favorite foundations. I have some that like the Vibrancy Foundation is one of my favorites, but I, that was just a repurchase from like 2016 maybe. So I didn't want to talk about that. Um, I did want to kind of break it up into categories. So I'm going to do regular liquid foundation, my favorite cream slash stick foundation, and then my favorite like um, tinted face product, not necessarily a foundation. So let's start out with favorite, just regular liquid foundation. The first one is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation. Don't have this one on today. It's a little dark for me at this point in time. Um, I actually got a hydrofacial this morning and you know, she went down on my neck. So any, any self tan that was there is long gone. So it will match me once I freshen my self tan up and it definitely matches me in the summer because I have the shade seven but right now it's just a little too dark. I flipping love this foundation. I did not use it for so long because I heard not great reviews on it, but please, please get you a sample of this foundation. If you don't have a Charlotte Tilbury near you in like a Nordstrom or anything, call Beautylish because they will send you foundations through the mail, samples through the mail. It's so good, so, so good. This is the foundation that I have on today and I absolutely love it. I have it in two colors. It's the Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. 
I have a whole review on this. I love this foundation. It lasts all day on me. It is um, skin-like, more like a natural finish. It's not too luminous. It's definitely not matte. I can manipulate it with powders and primers. Again, it lasts all day on me. I love it. Love it. So I have on the color Bowen SF4 today, and then Catalina is my summer color. So love that. Be sure and check out that video if you haven't seen it already, because it is a definite favorite of mine from this year. As far as cream slash stick foundations, I have two, one of which you may not have heard as much about, but that's going to change. The first one is the Tom Ford uh, Traceless Foundation Stick. Talked about this a lot. This is in the color Six and a Half Sable. Um, and it's just a foundation stick. And it's the first foundation stick that has worked for me. Um, rarely will a foundation stick work for me. The Lancome didn't. The Hourglass didn't. So many foundation sticks. Makeup Forever didn't. Just don't work for me. This worked for me. But it worked for me on such a high level. It's so easy to blend out. It's so travel friendly. It's so pretty in the finish. I do have a whole separate video on this as well, so I won't talk too long, but definitely a favorite. My other favorite cream foundation is one that I haven't talked about a ton. I did put it in my favorite cream foundation video that I did a few months ago, but it's the Keir Weiss uh, foundation. <laughs> I have it in the color Just Sheer. It comes in this really luxe packaging. I will say it's not the cheapest foundation ever. I think it was in the $68 range. However, you can buy refills because it does have a hole in the back where it pops out so that you don't have to reuse this packaging. So it's very sustainable in its packaging. It's an organic brand and it is so nice. I need, I do need to do a, a whole total separate review on it. Let me know if you want to see that because it is one that I reach for a lot. And when I do reach for it, I tend to reach for it like for at least five or six consecutive days after that because it looks so good on the skin. It really is a second skin cream foundation, even more so than the Tom Ford. Love, love, love. Okay, now on the kind of tinted face products, the Kosas Tinted Face Oil comes out on top for me. It's a little bit um, late in the game for me. I got it in August, but I have absolutely adored it every month since. I, again, have a full review on this. It is a Amazing. I do have a couple y'all who have emailed me saying you love it. A couple y'all have said it hasn't worked out for you. Kosas does actually send samples through the mail. So if you want to contact them, they commented on my review of this and said that they do. So that is a way that you can get samples of it to try before you buy the full, full bottle. But coming from me, my skin type, my skin wants and needs and coverage and everything, I flipping love this stuff. All right, the two concealers are probably not going to come as any surprise to you. The First Aid Beauty Hello Fab Bendy Avocado Concealer. Again, I did an entire review on this. Um, I was lucky enough to receive the full line, and I fell head over heels in love with this concealer. I use the number three, which I believe is light. Um, occasionally, I will use the number two if I really want to brighten up my under eyes. I have used the darker colors on clients for contour. So good. It really is like a second skin. It doesn't have as much coverage as some of the other concealers on the market, but I have gotten to a point where I will sacrifice coverage for non-cakey, non-creasy under eyes, and that is what this gives you. Now, if I wanted to bump up my coverage just a little bit for the same finish, I go for the Josie Marin Vibrancy Argan Oil Full, Argan Oil Full Coverage Concealer Fluid. This is what I have on today. Uh, never ever, neither one of these ever does me wrong. I never look at my face at the end of the day when I have these on and say, oh, my under eyes look like crap. And there are a ton of concealers that I like that I can't say that about. That by the end of the day on some days, I'm like, oh man, it just doesn't look so good. I've never had a day where that happens with this. So these are by far my very two favorite concealers from 2018 and will continue to be my favorite concealers into 2019 until I find something better, which is going to be hard because it's going to be very hard to beat these two for me. I would be remiss not to talk about the Color Science Total Eye 3-in-1 Renewal Eye Therapy, 
when talking about concealers. This is the color corrector that I use every single day of my life underneath my concealers. It is also an eye cream. I use a separate eye cream because a lot of times I will do my skincare two, three, four hours before I put makeup on. So I do use a separate eye cream within that, but this just adds that much more moisture before my concealer while also brightening up my under eyes because I do suffer from quite a bit of darkness under my eyes. So that is a huge favorite of 2018. Now, what are we going to next? Let's talk about powders. The under eye powder that has become my favorite this year is the Laura Mercier Secret Blurring Powder. It's very compact. It's very reminiscent of the NARS Radiant Pressed Crystal Powder without the luminosity. I don't find I get any luminosity from this, but it's one of those ones that you can swatch and swatch and swatch and swatch and you don't, I mean, you get some on your hands, but it's not like, it's really nothing. Like it blends into nothing. I don't quite understand the bad reviews that I've seen on this, uh, but we all have different under eyes. So it's something you might want to try out, but be sure and get it from a place that you can return if you need to. But it is by far be become my favorite under eye setting powder for my concealers. Now, as far as face powders, this is one of those products that uh, bought in 2017, but rediscovered in 2018 and I want to say I really just discovered it because for some reason I didn't like it when I first tried it but it's the Well People Bio Brightener Invisible Powder. This is the powder I have on today over the Ilia foundation and again when I first bought this back in 2017 it was at the end of the year I just wasn't wowed by it. I, I didn't get the hype but then I picked it up you know kind of mid-year and I got the hype like I I I got the hype. I really like this powder. It doesn't look like powder. It doesn't have a chalky finish. It doesn't crease or cake up on me throughout the day. It holds the finish of my foundation without mattifying it too much, but it also is not too luminous. It really is just such a wonderful powder. Now, this is one that I bought in January and I have used diligently ever since. So it is by far one of my very favorites and it is the Glow Skin Perfecting Powder. This stuff is no joke when it comes to the least looking powder powder that I have. Like it does not show up on your skin at all. I can't even tell you the countless messages I've gotten from y'all since I've started talking about this that says you've gotten it and love it. And I really have gotten no messages saying it didn't work out for them, asking how to get it to work, none. This is such a good powder. The only thing I will say is if you look at it, I feel like I haven't like made hardly any dent in it. Let's get it to focus. It's getting that kind of like hard pan, which sometimes happens when your brush um, hits your foundation and your foundation is not dry and it can sometimes do that. So I've had to take a spoolie to it to kind of get that hard pan away, but it does not detract from, I can actually see a ring of the pan. Wow. It does not detract from the um, performance of the powder whatsoever. I cannot rave. Can you tell? I cannot rave highly enough about any of this stuff, but I love that powder. And then I have to, I mean, why? Why am I even saying this? Why am I saying this? You know that I love the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Radiant Light. This is, I think, my third compact, and obviously you can tell I am have hit serious pan. I already have a backup in my drawer. This is by far my favorite buffing powder that I have ever tried. Um, dim light also works on me, but I like radiant because it warms up my face just a little bit more without being too dark. So hands down, best buffing powder I have ever used in my entire life. Again, something that's going to take a miracle product to replace. Bronzers. These two bronzers, when I looked at my bronzer drawer, honestly, I don't feel like I bought a ton of bronzers in 2018. All of them, I put labels on my stuff when I buy it so I can keep track of when I bought it. And most of them were from 2017. Um, and while I did use them a lot, these were the ones that I did discover in 2018 and really have been enjoying. The first one is what I have on my face today. I believe this did make it into a favorites. I know the second one did. This is the Jouer Sunkissed and Sunset Medium to Deep Duo Bronzer. So it looks like this. They have blushes that are also in this same kind of duo packaging. I haven't tried those. I've heard they're amazing. But the bronzer, holy cow. Um, I, again, got medium to deep. The, the light to medium looked way too light to me online. I'm glad I got this. Um, in the summer, I can just use the deep color. For today, I mixed the two colors to warm up my face. It is, how do I describe it? Like, you can see a tiny bit of shimmer when you look at it, but net, net, what? 
am I doing, like, I can't talk. That never translates to the face. It's more of a luminosity um, or like a skin finish, which is obviously my goal in life is to have a skin look on my skin. So that is, oh, love, love, love. And this next bronzer is the same thing, except I think it's even a little more natural than the Jouer. And it's the Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Powder Bronzer in Bronze 03. Ever since I've gotten this, I've talked a lot about it. This is the one bronzer I think, I truly think I can say, even over my hourglass ones, that looks the most natural on your skin. It could be a setting powder if you had a little bit of a darker skin tone. If I, I could probably set my face with the O2. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous on the skin. It is a baked powder. Honestly, you need this bronzer. I've said that before, but you really do need this bronzer. Um, I also really like the new diffused, I think it's diffused light um, hourglass bronzer that I just got, but I just got that like last month, so, or November, so I felt like I shouldn't talk about that too much, but obviously I do like that as well. All right, let's talk about highlights because I do put highlight on after bronzer and before blush. Um, again, with the highlights, I didn't buy, I feel like, that many highlights in 2017. The Hourglass Trio palette that I adore so much was, I think I just said 2017, 2018, I'm talking too much. The Hourglass Trio palette that I love so much was bought in December of last year, or 2017, so I didn't want to talk about that. So these are the two, and really I only found one from 2018. And it's the Charlotte Tilbury Bar of Gold palette. I don't even know if you can still get this anymore. I'm hoping it's at least on her website. It's not the cleanest packaging because if you can tell, I swipe my brush through all three colors. I really don't pinpoint one color unless I'm using it as eyeshadow. But this is the highlight that I have on today. It's so pretty. It melds into your skin. There's absolutely no discernible shimmer to it at all. And it really looks gorgeous. If you have texture on your skin, if you have fine lines that you're not wanting to accentuate, so you really don't need anything that's like chock full of glitter or visible shimmer, but you still want that really pretty glowing highlight, I would recommend this. I hope you can still get it. If not, I'm sorry, but I'm just being honest. This really was my favorite. Um, and then this is from 2017, but I had to talk about it because I used it so much. It's Champagne Pop from Becca. I use this as a highlight. I used it as eyeshadow. I used it all the time, all the time. So I had to talk about that, even though it's definitely not something that's just from last year. But those are the two highlights that I would say um, I discovered in 2018 that I love the most or that I used the most. All right, let's talk about blush. I have two blush favorites, or really it's not a shade. It's the company as a whole that I discovered in 2018 that I cannot stop using. The first is Glow Skin Beauty. I've talked about these blushes so much, but I love them so much. And I have five colors. I have Sandalwood which is a really pretty kind of bronzy matte color. Flower Child, which is a pretty vibrant, cool toned pink. Soleil, which is my favorite. It's like a peachy, it's really more of like a peachy nude color with a little bit of a sheen to it. I love this, I use that one the most. Sweet, which is also peach. It's, it's a little bit more of a warmer color than Soleil and a little bit more vibrant in its peachiness, but it also has a sheen. And then Melody. This is a gorgeous mauve toned matte blush. So, so pretty. They are, they have such, just the right amount of pigment. They blend out beautifully. The colors are awesome. Love, love those. I've been saying that a lot. I'm sorry. I need to put like a little disclaimer at the front. I say 2018 and love way too much. The next is the Beauty Counter Blushes. Y'all knew I was going to talk about these because I have not been able to stop since I have started using them in the summer of this past year. They are so incredibly good. I depotted them so that I could have them all together because I do like to use these on clients as well. These for me and my skin are the longest lasting blush that I have ever used. They do not fade throughout the day. They are heavily pigmented so you do need to use a light hand depending on what color you use. But today I have on these two colors, which is Guava and Sorbet. So I mix these two together to put the color that you see on my cheeks today. Love these so much. I also love Date. I also love Nectar. Yeah, that's Nectar right here. I love all of them. 
I really do love all of them and there's they suit all skin tones um, or there's a color within the line that will scoot, that will suit all skin tones. I just absolutely adore those. All right, so sticking on skin really quickly before we get to eyes and lips, I want to talk about my two favorite um, kind of setting sprays. I don't really require a setting spray per se because I don't have an issue most of the time with my makeup lasting all day, but I do like to spritz some kind of spray to melt the powdery look down, to kind of blend all my uh, makeup together on my face, settle it down into my skin, and sometimes it will impart a luminosity as well, which I'm never mad about. So this is the Algenist Splash Hydrating Setting Mist. Every time I talk about this, I feel like I have not used any more than I did the last time. It's lasting so long for me, but I am almost out of this. Um, I love this. It doesn't have any fragrance or alcohol, which is important to me. Um, and especially in a setting mist because that's hard to find sometimes, but it is hydrating. Uh, and it's just really lovely. I like how it makes my makeup look. And then the next one is the Jane Iredell Palmist Hydration Spray. So again, this doesn't claim to be a setting spray. It's more of a hydration spray, but it, this is what I use today. It just, it's meant more for the mineral makeup that Jane Iredell has so that it will set that powder into the skin. So it's really good if you use powder foundation, but it, it works over anything. I also like to spray this even before I do makeup for an extra burst of hydration if it's been quite a while since I did my skincare. So those are the two sprays that I have just absolutely adored this past year. Now let's talk about eyes. Um, I did not have any, so okay, I could talk about single shadows and cream shadows and all day long, but I really rotate so much through my eyeshadows that I couldn't say I used one single shadow more than any other or one cream shadow more than any other. Really, I rotate so much through my palettes that it was hard to say that too, but I did pull out three that I did find myself reaching for the most. So like when I traveled, these are the ones that I would pick from to take when I traveled because I never had an issue picking out color combinations from them, having them look good. I just never had an issue. Um, this one I have on my eyes and it's the Too Faced Just Peachy Mattes. This I bought in 2017 at the end of 2017, but I would be lying if I said I did not reach for this countless times last year. Countless. So it's the matte colors that I have on my eyes. I have on Just Peachy, Peach Punch, Peach Sangria, and Peach Tart today. Um, you can do so many looks with this. I've used this in so many tutorials. I've talked about this in so many favorites. It is just an absolute staple for me. These are my favorite colors to wear on my eyes. I love oranges. This Peach Sangria is probably one of my very favorite eyeshadow colors ever in any of my palettes. It, it's rare that I use this palette where I don't pull from Peach Sangria. Love it. That's what I have on my outer corner today. It just for blue eyes really complements it. Love this palette and I've used it so much. So much. Another one that I have pulled from so much is the Beauty Counter Classic Eyeshadow Palette. I will tell you, every time I do my favorite look from this palette, which includes Sienna right here, Burnished, and Copper, those three, and Ivory, those four colors, every time I do that and I wear it on a video, I get more comments about my eye look. Now, I think it's one of two things. I think it's because these eyeshadows are absolutely gorgeous, and I also think, also think that it's because the colors in this eyeshadow palette complement blue eyes so much. Um, so that's two of the reasons that I reach for it the most. I love it. It's an amazing travel palette. I really don't need any other shadow than what I have in here for my taste for eye looks. And so I, for if I want a warm look, it's a no-brainer for me to reach for that palette. This is also something that I bought in 2017, but I have been reaching for it so much in this past year that I would be remiss not to talk about it as well. And it is the Persona Identity Palette. Um, this made it into my favorites, like the past two top fives. Love it so much. I have the color Seductive on my eyes, my eyelids today. And then I have the color Sassy um, in my inner corner and my brow bone. And really, it's just, it's a no brainer as well. It's got equal parts matte, equal parts shimmer. It's got warm tones, it's got cool tones, it's a beautiful formula, very easy to blend, very easy to work for, work with, very pigmented. I mean, you really can do no wrong. I also really love the new 5 p.m. palettes that they came out with. 
But this is the original and it's going to be hard to beat that, honestly. It, they, it's just so good. And it's very reasonable, reasonably priced. I think it's only $32. So definitely if you have not gotten your hands on this, try that one out for, as well as the other two because they are so good. Now, uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this either, but I have to include it. My I, my mascara routine, I don't really think has changed all year. I use the same four products every single day. Uh, the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash, I use on my lower lash lines every single day. This is a tubing mascara. It does not transfer no matter how much I sweat. If I cry, whatever, it does not transfer, but it's very easy to get off when I remove my makeup at night. The two primers that I use on my upper lash line because I am just that high maintenance when it comes to my lashes are is the Jane Iredell Pure Lash Lash Extender Conditioner or Lash Extend Conditioner. This has, and I've said it so many times before, I think this has attributed to the length of my lashes along with my lash serum that I use because it does have such conditioning agents in it that claim to do so. But I also like it as a primer. To give a little bit more volume of a primer, I use the L'Oreal Voluminous Primer. So this one is probably the eighth or ninth or maybe even tenth tube that I've gone through of this. I think this is my fourth one. I have backups of both waiting for me in my backup drawer because I never want to be without these primers. They are so good. I also have a backup of the Bare Minerals Lash Topia Mascara. This is the second or third tube that I've gone through. And again, I have a backup in there. I can't, I mean, I like the Thrive. I like the Chanel. I've tried other mascaras this year. I like the CoverGirl one in the green tube but I can't get away from coming back to this one. There may be some out there that make my lashes longer. There may be some that make them more voluminous, but there is not one that I have found that makes them both at the same time, is easy to remove and does not flake on me. I can't get enough of this. The only thing I will say about it is that the brush is massive, which typically I don't have an issue with, but because it's so fluffy and large, it will sometimes transfer on to my lower, like very lash line where you would put your liner, which typically if you wear eyeliner, it's not going to be a big deal. I don't often wear eyeliner. So sometimes if I'm going for like an all matte look and it transfers, I may have to go in and kind of buff that out at the end, but I don't really care. It is not enough to keep me from ever. I don't want to say ever, because if I've learned anything in my 38 years is to never say never. It's going to take a lot for me to stop using this. So I honestly, I don't think I've used any other mascara for any discernible length of time in 2018 than this one. And then I will talk about the Endless Silky Eye Pen from Pixie by Petra. This is in the color, is it Black Noir? Uh, this is the second one I've gone through. They last forever. I, again, said I don't really typically do liner, but I always, always do liner in the waterline or my tight line. I feel like as I'm getting older, my lids are kind of turning up to where my tight line is even more noticeable uh, than it has been in the past. So even if I'm not wearing mascara, even if I'm not doing brows, which come on, that's never the case. Even if I don't wear makeup, I almost always have my brows on, but I will, even if I'm not wearing mascara, I will still put this on because it just makes my lash line look so much thicker. It makes my eyes look not so tired. I just, I love this. I have another one that was sent to me that I've been trying that I might talk about my January favorites because I have really been loving that as well. But for 2018, this was definitely my choice. Are you still with me? Uh, let's talk about lips and then we will be done. So I have two lip glosses, a lipstick formula and a liquid lipstick formula that I want to talk about. So the lipstick formula has to go to the Beauty Counter Color Intense lipsticks. They came out with these I've, spring or summer and there's seven colors in the line. I do believe they're going to be extending that color range soon, but this is a lipstick that is one of the most pigmented lipsticks I've ever used. Enough to where you literally can just dab it on your lips and get a full color coverage, uh, which is with the darker colors, a lot of times what I have to do. This is the lipstick that has gotten me out of my nude lip funk, which some of y'all have really heavy opinions on, which kind of just cracks me up, honestly, because it shouldn't really matter 
to y'all what lip color I wear. Um, it's what I'm comfortable in, but these have been the ones that have gotten me out of that when I want to be a little bit more bold. It's the first red lip color that I have felt comfortable getting on camera or even leaving this room in, and it's this color called Girls' Night. I had it on in my, was it my June favorites? I believe my June favorites video, and I got so much feedback about that lip color. It doesn't bleed. It's so pretty. I just did a look for my other channel. I don't know if it's up yet or not. Which one did I use? Little Black Dress, which is this really pretty, like, deep pinkish berry color. Oh, so pretty. So really and truly, like, they are some of the very best lipsticks that I have ever used. They stay put forever, and even if the top layer of color kind of fades off, that bottom layer almost it almost leaves a stain, so I feel like I can just top it with a gloss and have it last for like six, seven, eight hours. Uh, the liquid lipstick formula, which I am not a huge fan of, but when these came out, I tried them and loved them, and they're the Persona Cosmetics liquid lipsticks. I have on the color Flamingo today underneath the gloss that I'm going to show you, but I also really like this red. I, I wore that in a video as well. This is Flamingo. The red is called Holy Grail, and then this is called OG, which is a really pretty brown matte color. They are not drying. They don't leave that nasty ring around your mouth. Um, I'm not going to say they never transfer, but they're long lasting and they're not drying and they don't leave a ring, and those are my biggest complaints about other liquid lipsticks, so I can't rave enough about the Persona Cosmetics. I hope they bring out more colors, because I will be very interested to try those. Now, finally, my favorite lip glosses of the year. I started buying this probably in 2016. This is the one I have over that um, Persona color, and it's the Bare Minerals Far Out. I believe it's my third tube that I have used. It's a very kind of milky nude color that really just blends into any lipstick color you're wearing. Lightens it just a little bit because y'all know I love my nudes. It's not sticky. It's long wearing. Love it. My other one is the Beauty Counter Bare Shimmer. This is just such a universal pink color. Anybody can wear it. It's not so opaque that you have to be wearing pink in order to pull this off. Um, but it also is not so clear that it won't impart somewhat of a, of a like veil of color over your lips. Again, not sticky. I could eat it and it wouldn't hurt me. Really good ingredients. So I have really and truly, these are the ones that I carry in my purse the most. They're the ones I top over all my lipsticks and they're the ones you probably see in my description bar the most. That is my 2018 favorites. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want me to do a 2018 skincare favorites. Again, it might be repetitive for some of y'all who have been following me for a while, but you're if you're interested to see what I narrow it down to, then for sure let me know and I will film that as well. So as always, when I get done with my favorites videos, I always like to hear what your favorite product was in the year 2018. So be sure and let me know down in the comment section below. I will, as always, have everything listed and linked in the description bar. Thank y'all so much for watching, and I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.